Hey everyone, welcome to another how to draw anime explanation video. Now on April Fools, I reviewed a, a few tutorials which are fantastic and of course a garbage bag as well. But I wanted to do another one because it's actually pretty fun to look at these and really understand that no matter what style you're going for, there are some art fundamentals which kind of go universal and they're definitely more educational than I thought it, they were before I started the, the uh, video. So this one will be another one where I explain certain tutorials which are fantastic. So first I want to start with this one. This one is really good actually. This is very fundamental. You'll find that any animation art school will talk about uh, this stuff. It's the idea of the beanbag and the torso. So you see we have the default torso on the top left and then uh, the artist chooses to tilt it towards the right here. So you notice the reason why we always break it down into some sort of beanbagish thing is because a lot of people kind of draw the torso very stiffly but in order to really capture the movements that you might need for your characters you would have to see it as if it's in motion and in general they, they are separate parts if you see it as a single part uh, like a lot of amateurs then you end up making a very stiff body so this is a fantastic tutorial to show the power of the crunch and the stretch over here just the um, stretch and squash as animation people would call it so when it's tilted to one side obviously we end up with a squish and tension on that one side then we can start twisting it so you see how the arrow points here it's rotating so now we have tensions at different points and we end up with a very dynamic pose. Same thing here where the artist really just creates a tension over here and also creates a torque like that. Fantastic work by this artist. It's very simple and very easy to follow and something everybody should utilize for their characters no matter what species, of course. Then we can get into this head tutorial. This is actually a great tutorial because it highlights a common problem that a lot of people make when they draw a three-quarter face. So it's the placement of the ear. Let's use a different color, actually. Should have just stayed with red. So you see how the X on the left side the artist notes that the ear is over here, but the neck is over here. Let's use a different color for the neck. Like that. It doesn't make sense. This is not how human heads work because it doesn't imply a back of the head. Like on the good example where the neck is placed properly because as the artist highlights it, now we get an implication of the back of the head. And here as well, similarly, the ear is over here. Just weird looking, it doesn't work. There's no space where the uh, trapezius muscle is uh, exhibited uh, uh, on this side of the uh, equation here, the drawing. So you see how there's an implication of real muscles in the back Whereas on the left side here, it doesn't show much room and it really doesn't show the proper attachments to the neck. Again, a very common mistake. Try to fix it when you're drawing heads. This one is pretty cute actually. Um, again, a very simple problem and solution. When there is wind going one way, a lot of people kind of create weaker wind than usual. Um, because of the fact that a lot of people kind of create a very parallel uh, sense with the hair. Um, this is very common in anime. 
Um, so you do want to get this right if you're trying to uh, portray wind. When you have wind that can raise the hair to this degree, most likely you will have a much more uh, convergent uh, hairline over here, if that makes sense. Very nice uh, depiction of what to do and what not to do when it comes to drawing sense of wind. Very simple tutorial here again. Um, I have problems with the proportions of the face, of course, but it doesn't really matter because the tutorial is on drawing cat ears. Now, I've drawn cat girls and dog girls or whatever. I've drawn all of them. Um, one thing that I actually do tend to make mistakes on is the attachment to the head as well. So in this case, fantastic tutorial depicting what not to do, which is just kind of pasting the ears on the head. But in this example, there's actual sense that it is being held, it is holding back some of the hair and the hair is going around the ear that is attached underneath the hair towards the head. It's a very subtle thing, but it actually matters a lot in creating the sense of structure. Move on to here. Another very common mistake, especially for those who copy uh, tutorials. I mean, not, not tutorials, copy reference photos. So what happens is people tend to draw without thinking of the form underneath. So you see the hair here, big mistake. The hair is just going downwards, but the head is tilted to one side. So whenever a Whenever you're drawing a head, we we have to imply the rounded form of the head. And the hair, if you were to draw this vertically, it's not going to say much. And it's going to actually kill the sense of form no matter how well you draw the head. So here as well, very boring shapes, very squarish. You might find that in reality, in photos, you might there might be somebody who looks like this, but for the sake of art, let's make it more exciting. This is the same thing as well, very flat. Um, the form is all over the place. I'm even drawing the proper form here compared to what the bad example is. There just needs to be something rounded to give the sense that is a rounded shape here. Oh, uh, now I kind of drew the correct version over here um, out of instinct, but you can see, okay, let's look at this one. Nice rounded hair shapes, and it shows the back of the head is rounded as well. Um, fantastic. This is a design thing, by the way. Yes, again, there technically might be people who look like what you see on the left, but we need to exaggerate things a bit to make it more interesting for the viewers, for art. So something like this and something like this. Fantastic tutorial, something everybody should look at when it comes to um, drawing hair. Now, this one is a funny one too. I don't know if it's by the same artist, but it is by the same, it with the same format. Now, there's a lot of weird things going on with the left side. Um, the left side is when you are thinking too much uh, in terms of anime and not really uh, the anime frontal view and not really thinking in terms of how to create a realistic depiction and also an appealing depiction of the angling. So here, for example, notice how the... the, uh, the he point, he or she rather, the artist points out the center of the head here. Very boring. It really doesn't work like this because you notice the top of the middle, the uh, top of the head. Um, we know as a fact, even when you're feeling your own face, that our chins cannot recede like this. So it could never happen in this reality. In, this form where the top of the uh, head is the same alignment as the chin. So this is a great example of how to fix it. You see how if I were to bring down the top of the head, the chin is still outwards. 
because of course we know there is space between the top of the, the middle of the top of the head to the chin. So here we see another problem as well. For somebody who wants to draw an anime face, I tend to do this thing too. Um, it, ha it depends on how um, appealing it can be depending on the angle. And of course you can take some liberties, but in this case it doesn't work because the man's chin over here it's kind of like, it's not showing the same perspective as everything else. So especially when it comes to the ears as well, this the artist points it out, the head is looking up. So the ears are actually misaligned. They should be somewhere around on here. So you see how the artist fixes it over here. The ears are now properly aligned. The head is now properly looking up and we do see more of the under chin here to create the sense, is to imply the sense of perspective. Same thing with the nose, same thing with the mouse. Every, everything is per, really nicely aligned to create the sense of perspective and angling. Here, of course, we can see there's a lot of issues again. Um, a lot of people make the mistakes of not giving enough room for the chin here. So it'll be something like this um, for a fix and you can see there's a fixed version of that as well. Everything is out of perspective. The eyes is looking like a frontal view. The eyebrows look like it's a frontal view. It shouldn't start over here. It most likely would be put down like this. And as you can see, I didn't even look at the right side. It would be something. And I saw that uh, he, he or she fixed the mistakes on the side. Um, you can see there's like little proportional things as well. You don't have to fall exactly where the neck should start up. It depends entirely on the peel again. But you see there are, even when drawing anime, there is a sense of realism and what is possible for a human head. Fantastic tutorial. So here, a little bit more obvious, I want to look into hair again uh, because last time I really didn't. So you see how um, this artist is noting the sense of gravity when uh, you're doing leaning faces. Um, so knowing where the point of origin is, where it starts drooping directly down to, to gravity. And you see it as well over for the man. Very nicely done. It's pretty much implied, but a lot of people kind of make the mistake of maybe putting the vantage point uh, where gravity starts affecting it too far too far back or too far in to create a weird sense of anatomy. Then here as well, same artist, um, but more extreme movement um, with the uh, girl at least. You see how she is most likely falling down and there's a huge sense of wave over here. So gravity is affecting her, but the hair is kind of like a fall through. It's it kind of lagging behind you to create this nice movement upwards like this. Um, it's pretty much implied, especially if you've fallen down before. Not that I have hair this nice, but it's kind of logical. Now this one is more subtle. The man over here is most likely just drooping down his face a bit, just leaning down a bit, um, and then creating a really subtle sense of upwards movement with his hair. So sort of like this sort of thing. It's very subtle but it actually makes a difference. Um, again, there's always great anime and then there's just mediocre anime and you really want to hit that great anime point if you want to draw this sort of thing or anything else rather. And you, you know, realism of any kind, you'll have gravity and forces working along each other. This tutorial is fantastic. It kind of reminds you of that. And I believe I am done, but again, I, I really loved reviewing these. Let me know if you want to see more of these. Um, I just uh, took these off Pinterest. Well, apologies if I don't really know the exact artist name for each one. Um, but you notice there, no matter what you're drawing, anime or otherwise, you'll probably find tutorials. And while a lot of them admittedly are really bad, these ones I picked out are just fundamentally strong and something you should really listen to. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.